This is a Toyota Corolla, and also, it's my rental car for the next couple of days. But how do I get from this to having a music career? Let's go find out. So how do I get from Toyota Corolla to career in the music industry in less than 10 minutes? Well, come with me, because this week I hired a new full-time member of staff. It's become very clear to me that as I deal with more labels and more artists, I needed another pair of hands, and I needed a specialist. And what dawned on me was whilst I was going through the process, it's the same thing every single time. And it doesn't matter whether you want a publishing deal or what a live agent or whether you want to work a live agency or you want to be a session musician, it's always the same process. And you can't just ask to be let in, which is ironic because the amount of people that just email and ask to be let in. Oh, I saw that job advert and uh, I'd love to give it a go. Now, I understand how that could help you, but how that possibly helped me. So I wanna look at the process and how this can help you get a job in the music industry. And then I promise I will get back to the Toyota Corolla. So I put a job ad out, including on my socials, and I got over 500 applications in three days. A huge supply and demand issue. So many people for one job. Now, am I gonna go through in detail 500 job applications? No, of course not. I've got to start whittling it down. So I'm looking for any reason at all to start getting rid of people. Number one, spelling. If you cannot spell my name right, I know it's not the most normal name, but if you can't spell my name right, your attention to detail is not there, you are in the bin. If you cannot put a cover letter in with your application, then you couldn't be bothered, then therefore it goes in the bin. Because I'm trying to whittle this down fast, I'm looking for any reason to get rid. Oh, you're not in the right time zone. Okay, well, that isn't going to work for me. Oh, you don't have the right experience. Well, that doesn't work for me. You don't seem to have enough skill. That doesn't work to me. Your grammar doesn't look very, very good. Well, you should have got it checked. That doesn't work for me. Now, from 500, the first thing is I get it down to about 10 people. Do I want to interview 10 people? too much time. I haven't got time for that management. I haven't got time to interview 10 people. I've got to whittle this down but to between three and five people. So I'm brutal. I'm going through anything I can. I want to get this down to the best three to five people. And then comes the interview, although I'm still testing you right up to that point because the way that you accept the interview and how fast, I'm still judging you on. In the interview, I wanna know, what have you researched? What do you know? What do you know about me? What do you know about the company? What do you know about what we do? Because if you haven't done any research, tells me a good story. Then the obvious experience or leverage. Have you got a qualification? If you have, what is it and where it's from? Just because you've got a qualification, who hasn't? So if you've got a first from Oxford, Oxford or a 4.0 from Harvard, great. However, if you did psychology in the University of Lincoln, no offense if you did, well, not so impressive. Or maybe you didn't have a qualification, which is completely fine. After all, you are talking to someone who failed high school twice. But in which case, what have you done to build the leverage? For example, have you gone away and got that experience? Have you built that leverage? For example, with a social media job, have you gone away and got 50,000, 60,000 followers on an Instagram platform that shows me that you know what you're doing? Now, it's fair to say that I have done my fair share of interviews and my fair share of auditions. In fact, whilst I was setting up the music university and also my management company, I have auditioned thousands of musicians. Now, first thing is, I'll give you a song to play. Am I seeing how that song sounds? Yes, but that's one of many things. I wanna see the way it sounds. I wanna see the way you've learned it. I wanna see the authority in your playing but then there's so many other aspects. I'm also judging you on your gear. I'm judging you on your personality. Can you sing? Can you drive? Can you play some piano? Do you play any extra guitar? Do you know how to set up a PA? All of these things go into whether you're gonna work for me or whether you're not. It's all of the extras. For example, when someone comes in and instead of having learned a song, they learned the entire set, brownie points. Anyway, so going back to this job process, a couple of days in, I get an email from this guy who says, I'd love the opportunity. The problem is, is how am I supposed to get the experience unless someone like you gives me that opportunity, gives me that chance and gives me a job? And this is where things get really brutal. Same as everyone else. You have to go and build your own leverage. And I know it's tough, but it's not up to someone to give you the opportunity to build the experience. It's up to you. In the world that we live in, you aren't hired because you want the job. You are hired because you are the best fit for the person hiring. But the good thing is when it comes to building leverage, nobody can stop you going and getting that experience. If you want a publishing deal, 
then you need to go and write a thousand songs with a hundred writers. But the good thing is the only person that can stop you getting that experience is yourself. If you want a job in music PR, then have you written a thousand press releases? In fact, have you got your own blog and have you published hundreds of blog posts, hundreds of press releases to understand the concept that not only do you need to write the story, you need to go and find the story first, source it, and then write it up. I understand that it's hard to get the brick to build the experience, but there's so many things that you can do to build leverage. Now then, let's get back to the star of the show, the Toyota Corolla. Now, did you know that last year, Toyota sold 50 million of these cars? To put that into perspective, that is more than the entire population of Spain. Now that is so impressive, but what are your thoughts when I say the Toyota Corolla? Mine is, is it all right? It's not exactly a Bugatti, is it? It's not Ferrari, but it is comfortable and reliable and dependable and affordable and lots of other words that end in ible. But that doesn't tell the full story. The Toyota Corolla is kind of like the Ed Sheeran of the car industry. No one really knows how it got to that massive status, but it did, and now it has that reputation. But the actual story when it comes to the Toyota Corolla is it was manufactured first in 1966, and it was a flop. It wasn't reliable, it wasn't affordable, and it had a lot of design flaws. And it was in a stiff competition, especially in the US. But over the next 10 years, Toyota went to town. They did their market research, and they developed a, a car which was reliable, and affordable and comfortable and a safe pair of hands. Within 10 years, Toyota had taken a car which was a total flop to being a flagship in the Toyota brand. Why? Because every year they chipped away at it. They just made it a little bit better. Now they're not competing with Ferrari, they're competing with all of the likes of the same cars, Ford or Chevy. And they knew that if it was just a bit more affordable, if the fuel efficiency was just a little bit better, if it was just a little bit more reliable, they could win. And they chipped away and made it the safest pair of hands. And now 50 million cars in one year. So this is your job. Your job is to build the reputation one song at a time, one gig at a time, one press release at a time, one post at a time. And in doing so, if you're chipping away, you are getting better and nobody can stop you getting better and nobody can stop you building that experience. When it comes to getting a job in the music industry, this isn't about whether you can or can't do the job. After all, probably 50% of the people who sent in an application could probably do the job. This is about who's the best person. Who's got the most experience? Who's more hungry for this job? And that is something you can make a difference on. So the big question then becomes, what are you doing tonight? Because if you wanna be a session player, for example, then are you gigging tonight? And if not, why not? Because seven nights a week, there's seven possibilities for you to go and get a gig on an evening. And if you say, well, I'm not in a city that has that many gigs, well, you need to move. Well, I don't know that many people to be able to have those opportunities. Well, you need to start networking. This is your career and your job. And tonight, you can go and write a press release if you wanna be in PR. You can go and get a gig if you wanna be a session singer. Don't wait to be asked and don't ask permission. There's a golden rule, which is it's not about having a reason to be hired. It's about having no reason whatsoever why you wouldn't. And that comes down to you, your experience and your work ethic over the next couple of months in order to build you into that safe pair of hands. And if you don't feel like you've got that reputation yet, then give yourself the next six to 12 months to become that safe pair of hands. So people come to you and they say, oh, I keep seeing you online. I keep seeing your socials. I keep seeing you on those gigs. All of a sudden, you become the go-to. Why? Because people keep seeing you. You must have heard the phrase, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I think that is total dog I think it doesn't matter who you know, it matters what are you gonna do for me? I'm the one paying you, I'm the one giving you the opportunity, what do I get? I don't give a shit who you know, what I care is what can you do for me that is better than if I hired somebody else. So what have we learned today? We have learned that if Toyota can sell 50 million Corollas last year, then there is zero excuses for you not to be able to get the job that you want in the music industry. But it's gonna take work. It's gonna take patience. It's gonna take you getting better and better day in, day out. And nobody can stop you improving and nobody can stop you getting that experience. So if you like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button. And why not click this video here? Because this one looks like it's probably got your name written all over it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.